Around the world, companies and increasingly individuals are racing to find ways to accurately test people for the coronavirus. The situation is changing daily, if not hourly. We simply don't have mass testing available for the population now. And there's a big effort going on to try to get that in place as quickly as possible to be able to manage this. We're in negotiations today to buy an, a, a so-called antibody test, as simple as a, a pregnancy test, that can tell whether you have had the disease. There are two types of tests being worked on. Diagnostic tests, which identify people who currently have coronavirus, and antibody tests. These look for antibodies in the blood to see if a person ever had the virus in their system, and if they did, when. The diagnostic tests are primarily based on a technology called PCR, polymerase chain reaction. This is a standard molecular technique that identifies the genetic material of the virus from a throat or nose swab. Special emergency use authorization from the American Food and Drug Administration has enabled two companies to ramp up commercial testing efforts in the US. One is Swiss company Roche, which uses its Cobus machines, which are already in many hospitals across the country, to increase the amount of people who can be tested at once. The other is Thermo Fisher, which uses its applied biosystems PCR instruments. The company aims to produce 5 million tests for these machines by early April. But it's not just big companies getting involved in testing efforts. In West London, a community of open-source scientists, engineers, and microbiologists working out of shipping containers in the open-cell bio-village are trying to help. There are 70 shipping containers here with labs looking at a range of biotech challenges, from personalized medicine and DNA sequencing to bioelectronics and biomaterials. Its shared molecular biology lab has been transformed to experiment with expanding testing capacity while also designing a portable lab solution built out of a shipping container that could be easily transported. We're trying to use this automated methods to speed up the testing kit because in order to test for large populations, we need millions of COVID-19 testing kits. US company Opentrons donated two of its liquid handling machines to the lab for their work. These plates can test up to 96 samples at a time. These are also PCR diagnostic tests, like the ones we saw with the other companies, but these are open source rather than proprietary, and OpenCell says they would like to get the cost of testing down to five to 10 pounds per test. You know, here in the UK, I think it's, it's really about coming into that NHS pipeline, being able to augment someone's existing pathology department and being able to say, well, look, you know, here's the molecular biology kit to high throughput this so that you can, you know, the same one person could do 96 tests when, you know, when they're doing one anyway. If it receives regulatory approval, a lab could theoretically be set up with just three machines inside a shipping container. As well as being able to augment existing pathology labs around the country, a shipping container setup could help people in places with far less access to medical facilities. So I said it's only useful for the UK, it definitely is also useful for other countries, and it is also something that can be also um, reused in case anything like that happens again. So there's also like a long-term value there, really. There are some other innovative tests being developed in the UK. The University of Leicester is working on a face mask test using money from Research England and partnering with the NHS to repurpose the test they were using for tuberculosis. By wearing a face mask for 30 minutes, with 3D printed strips inside, it can show whether the person is breathing out the virus. Scientists at the University of Oxford say they have developed an ultra-sensitive test which can work in just 30 minutes. They say it doesn't need the kind of machines used in the other tests and could be deployed to rural or remote areas quickly. They also say its sensitivity means it can detect when someone is in the earlier stages of the virus, which could help slow down transmission. Detecting the virus in the early stages and in asymptomatic carriers could indeed be game-changing in halting its progress. Getting more tests out to as many people as possible, as soon as possible, could provide the data needed to accurately track the virus.